some pulmonary diseases, and most specifically, we're going to discuss obstructive lung diseases. So obstructive lung diseases include things like chronic bronchitis, asthma, and emphysema. Now, we should start by highlighting things that are normal here. So one characteristic is that the total lung capacity does not change in an obstructive um, lung disease. Now, the total lung capacity essentially is just saying, when I inhale, the hardest I can inhale, how much air can I get inside? And that number is 5,700 inside a diseased lung and also inside a normal lung. So these numbers in the key, these are a normal lung, okay? These numbers in the chart, these are a diseased lung. So you'll notice the number here is also 5,700. Okay, so the next number that also stays the same is this purple region. This purple region is the tidal volume. So that is a normal breath, okay? In a normal breath, someone with an obstructive lung disease can just get 500 um, milliliters of air, which is exactly what you see right here. So that's good. Now, the next, part we'll, next thing we'll focus on is things that are different. Now, you'll notice here that there are two numbers that change by 1,300. The first one is the vital capacity. I'll, I'll put that in green so you can see a little better. So this vital capacity refers to the amount of air that I can get in and out of my lungs when I inhale the hardest and then exhale the hardest. And that number is 3,200, okay? Usually, that number should be 4,500, okay? But where is this 1,300 difference going? And so that difference of 1,300, you can see it right here in the residual volume. Now, the residual volume gets increased by 1,300. Usually, it's 1,200, and now it's 25. So why is it increasing by this number? Well, obstructive lung diseases generally um, make it harder for the person to breathe out. So when it's harder for them to breathe out, they have a larger amount of uh, air in their lungs after they're done exhaling, even when they're exhale exhaling with force, which is what you see in the residual volume. Now, the question is, where are those 1,300 in the rest of these numbers? So this ERV, this refers to the amount of air that I can exhale after um, or past a normal exhalation. So usually that number... Instead of 500, usually it's 1,000. So that accounts for the first 500 out of the 1,300 difference we see here. Now, where is the other 800? So that other 800 can be seen right here in the functional residual capacity. And the functional residual capacity refers to the amount of air in the lungs after a normal breath. And that difference is 800 instead of 3,000 or instead of 2,200, I should say, it's 3,000. So numbers that are the same are this one, so the, the amount you can get in and out, the amount that can be in the lungs at maximum inhalation is the same. And a normal breath remains the same. But what changes is how much I can get in and out when I use all my force. And that's because I can never get another 1,300 out of my lungs. Those are in there for good. And that's because this number here, the ERV, that number decreased by 500 because I can't force as much air out anymore. And furthermore, this 800 increase in the FRC, functional residual capacity, that increased by 800 because I can no longer uh, exhale that 800 um, without force. So yeah, 800, 500, that accounts for the 1300 difference here. All right, thank you guys.